Hi, this is a very tired Frid from the Joy of Syntax and English in Color. I'll try to make a video even though I only slept four hours last night. My darling fur baby kept me up <laughs> and he's next to me. We'll see how far I get. This video is about the American R. Um, you all know that the one of the most distinguishing differences between British Standard English and American Standard English is the so-called post-vocalic R. However, I would argue that there is also something that I'll call a simultaneous R and that a very few people call a vocalic R. Most people don't discuss it. I will share my screen and share a PowerPoint with you that I prepared and I hope that this will help you out a lot. Let's go ahead and look at this. Okay, so um, you all know, of course, the R at the very beginning of words and syllable. I introduce the R when I discuss my sound alphabet with the help of this cute slide. Um, and I, I have my students meet Rachel and Ringo, the rhinos. Now the R is actually the most difficult letter in the English and American alphabet. It's not only difficult for non-native speakers, it's also difficult for children of native speakers, for native speaker babies and kids and young children. That's usually the last sound that they learn. And I still remember a little friend that I had when he tried to say try, he said, why and when he tried to say truck he said twack I want to twy it I want to have a twack so that was very cute <laughs> anyway so um, I always tell my students that they shouldn't be sad when they find the R difficult there are basically two ways of producing the R I will go to the next slide you can stop the video and read what it's saying I quote it uh, something from this book. This is actually a good book if you want to teach American English pronunciation. Um, and yeah, you can read what they have to say. They, dis they discuss two different ways of producing the R. One way is the so-called retroflex R's. You can also say retroflex, but people usually say retroflex. I often say retroflex. And according to Merriam-Webster's Unabridged, that's also correct. Oh, baby. Oh, I'm on me. Oh, you're waking up right when I'm making the video. Oh, no. Oh, hang on a second. I need to pause this video. Oh. So for the retroflex R, you curl the tip of the tongue backwards, like so, um, behind the alveolar ridge. But the tip of the tongue doesn't touch the palate. So actually you can go like this with your hand and imagine the that this is your tongue and you do the same. Let me put this slide here. And you do the same with your tongue. So you go I didn't do it simultaneously. <laughs> anyway, so uh, uh, uh. now for that sound to work, you do not need to round your lips, but with a lot of words, the R has some lip rounding. So you go er uh, or er. Uh. Um, I've often told my students try to not do any lip rounding because they actually made a mouth as if, as if they were going to say the woo. And then you have this thing that it sounds like twy instead of try. So I said try, try. But actually with certain vowels it's almost impossible not to have lip rounding more later. Anyway, so you can produce the R with this curled tongue, this tongue that's curled backwards and have the so-called retroflex R. You can also bunch the back of your tongue up 
uh, and have the, sort of this ball of your tongue in the middle of your mouth underneath your palate. Um, uh, uh. So the tip of the tongue is actually a, a little bit lower in the mouth. Uh, uh. And the bunched R and the retroflex R can sound the same. Er uh, and er. Uh, er. Uh. And they can sound a little bit different, but they sound like the like the English R. There are tons of YouTube videos about how to produce the R. So if you have problems, try some of those videos or contact me and I'll practice with you. Anyway, um, this video actually is not intended to teach you the basic R. I'm assuming that you know that, but I want to draw your awareness to the fact that American English does not only have a post-vocalic R, but that it also has a simultaneous R. And for that, let's look at the next slide. <clears throat> um, and for the, um, when you have um, a letter that represents a vowel, and that's followed by an R, so when you have a vowel sound and an R, you, the R is pronounced in American English. But in some cases, you really have the vowel and then the R. So you have a true post vocalic R. But when you have a central vowel followed by an R, the central vowel and the R amalgamate into one sound. They merge into one sound. And then it sounds like this. Er. So listen to the difference or let me go to the next slide. So we actually have the initial R. We have the simultaneous R. It happens when an R follows a central vowel. And then you have the real post vocalic R. And there are two varieties. When the R follows a front vowel, we basically have a combination of, um, let me show you this slide. We basically have a combination of the, um, the vowel plus the purple sound, the in bear, and then you have some lip rounding, er, bear, bear. And when you have back vowel plus R, then you really have the vowel plus the er sound as in Rhino. An example word is marmot. Um, and I'll come back to this slide and say something about the transcription. So these are all the R's in American English. Um, so in the beginning, at the beginning, at the beginning of a word or syllable, after a central vowel, after a front vowel or a back vowel. And let's look at some examples and listen to some examples. So here we have the initial R. It occurs in rhino, red, right, and at the beginning of the, the syllable inside of words, giraffe, orange. Now when we have a central vowel plus R, then we actually have this, what I would call a simultaneous R, or um, a merged R, or a vocalic R. That is this combo sound. And here, I really like Merriam-Webster's learner's transcription system. They have this symbol to represent the merging of the central vowel and the R. And I find it actually unfortunate that Oxford chooses this way of presenting the same sound. Now these two, this pink and the light purple, are representations of the same event. They both mean to represent er. But when you look at Oxford's transcription, you might think we have an er. And that's in fact how a lot of German students say it, but that sounds funky. It's not purple, it's purple. 
compare that with British English where there is no post vocalic R. Purple, purple, and purple. Here are more examples of post vocalic, uh, of what people often call post vocalic R's, but that are simultaneous R's, i.e., the merger of central vowels plus the R. Bird, girl, curl, pearl, better, perfect. Her. In gray, we have Oxford's representation of this event that I, these events that I just pronounced for you. But as I said, I really, really, really prefer Merriam-Webster's Mer way of presenting this event. Compare British English, where there's no post vocalic R and no simultaneous R. Bird, girl, curl, pearl, Better, perfect, her. Compare bird, bird, girl, girl, curl, curl, pearl, pearl. Better, better, better with um, flapped teeth. Better, perfect, perfect, her, her. Okay, now let's talk about the real post-vocalic R. First, after front vowels, as in bear, and then after back vowels, as in marmot. Here are examples. And I put them all on one slide, even though this doesn't quite fit. So, we have bear sounds. Beer, rear, beard, those are just three examples of the bear sounds. Ben the bear, beer, rear, beard. And now for the back vowel plus R, for the post vocalic R that happens after back vowels, I actually prefer Oxford's presentation because we really do have the vowel plus the R as in rhino. Car, it's not car, it's car. Rhino, car, her, car, car, her, hard, heart, cord, board, poor. So compare beer, poor, and watch how for beer you actually make a little snout or a strong lip rounding, and for poor you don't. Let's compare these post vocalic R's, these two kinds of post vocalic R's, with the British sounds. And now notice that after front vowels, the R causes a schwa in British English. Not an R, but a schwa. But after back vowels, we usually only have a lengthening of the vowel, except in poor, uh, poor where you have both options. Okay, let's compare American and British English. Beer, beer. Rear, rear. Beard, beard. Hang on a second, I need to pause the recording or I will be disturbed. Okay, now I lost my train of thought a little bit. Okay, where were we? Beard, beard. Now, back vowels, where in British English, you have a lengthening of the vowel usually. Car, car, hard, hard, heart, heart, cord, cord, board, board, poor, paw, poor. Okay, I hope this helped you. And before I leave you, I want to remind you of two words that are so often confused by learners of English. The adverb and question word where, which has a true post vocalic R, and the simple past form of to be were, were, which has a simultaneous R. Where were you? Where, where, you have a red sound plus, um, Plus the 
the big R, the the um, sort of the vocalic R, where, and then the true simultaneous R, just the vocalic R. Where, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? Brits would of course say something like where were you? Where with a schwa and a little bit of an intonation slide. Where with a lengthening you. Okay, this is it for today. I hope this helped you. Do you use Merriam-Webster's and Oxford's Learner's Dictionaries? They're very, very good. Uh, and keep listening to and watching. Um, well, listening to audiobooks and keep watching YouTube videos and nice movies. Take good care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.